Hello there, my name is Pete Donaldson and this is Spong's very own video game vidcast X V G. I can't do the G bit, but uh, never mind. We're going to be talking about lassoes this week, we're going to be talking about laser guns, and we're going to be talking about the busiest start to the gaming calendar known to man. Enjoy! As I said earlier, 2010, specifically the first quarter of 2010, looks like it may very well be heaven on the fingers and murder on the wallet. There are so many games coming out soon. Titles which should be on your shelves around about now include Bioshock, Mass Effect 2 and Alien vs Predator. We'll be kicking the tyres of Mass Effect 2 in just a second, but here are a couple of titles that look like they're going to be well worth a look. We only know how much we love someone when we know what we're willing to sacrifice. I never asked myself that kind of question without knowing why, without asking myself how far I would be prepared to go for love. Heavy Rain is the long-awaited third game from enigmatic French developers Quantic Dream. The first being Nomad Soul, starring David Bowie, and the second being the superb Fahrenheit from 2005. What was the man doing before the murder happened? He was there for a while. He was reading, I think. And as with Fahrenheit, Heavy Rain looks like it might be making a pretty decent fist of being an interactive movie, which is a genre that's had more stinkers than Mr. Eddie Murphy. It comes replete with a novel, some might say intrusive, control system, some spectacular motion capture work, and this is going to be a game that turns heads one way or the other. You should take your clothes off. We ain't gone all day. Actually, I'm not a customer. Oh, shit, a cop. And fair play to Quantic Dream for trying something that little bit different. Heavy Rain's going to be coming out on the 23rd of February. Everything I did, I did for love. Coming a little bit later, or March, if you want me to get all accurate on your ass, is the sequel to Just Cause, which is named, quite strangely, Just Cause 2. Where the original fell down was in the driving model. Cars handled like go-karts, and you were never more than a couple of minutes away from getting stuck in some scenery. This time round, though, the creators have promised to fix the niggles and concentrate on the fun bits, namely grappling hooks, punching fellas out of helicopters, and then smashing said helicopters into mountains, but not before parachuting to safety. Viva la revolution! A month later sees Red Dead Redemption from Rockstar Games hitting the shops, a fairly loose sequel to Red Dead Revolver, which is a fairly standard western themed shooter for the PlayStation 2 and original Xbox. In this iteration you take control of a fella named John Marston, who's dragged back from domestic bliss into a life he thought he'd given up years ago by a precursor to the modern FBI. He's basically Jack Bauer with smallpox and a six shooter. You getting keep with me boy? Calm down. Along the way, Marston has a choice of being either a goodie or a baddie, which is not a choice to be taken lightly. Just ask Bill Oddie. Players get to rob banks, catch outlaws, or just ride about on horses taking pot shots at townsfolk. It's entirely up to you. It looks just incredible, using as it does the engine from Grand Theft Auto 4, but this is the first time we've seen it handle a vast rural environment, so it should be quite interesting to see how it all pans out. I never stole nothing, sir. Never did. Not in all my life. I need the man, partner. I need it. And with this being a rock star title all about cowboys, Hopefully, there'll be some broke back amount in hot coffee style sex in it. Something to enrage the Daily Mail and uh, also enchant the very different organ, the Daily Mail. Red Dead Redemption should mosey on into town on the 27th of April, which is two days before my birthday, if my mother's watching. And depending on where you pre-order it from, you'll either get a special outfit, a golden gun, or a special war horse. Great stuff. So... A busy, busy start to the year. But what games am I playing possibly in my pants? The Reapers are still out there. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Mass Effect 2. The original was easily one of the best games of 2007. Game of the year, according to the New York Times. 
So what is the next episode like? Well, the short answer is it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, from the new missions to the new storyline to the new characters, Bioware have come up with something very special once more. It's kind of hard to explain to anyone who's never played the first game exactly how good a game of Mass Effect can actually get. But, to those who have, it's a fitting sequel to the sprawling space opera we played and replayed a couple of years ago. The act of combat and taking cover has been tightened up, gone is the hard to handle moon buggy, and the mission structure becomes a little bit more rigid, so, you, so you're never really lost as to what to do next. Graphically, it's probably what you'd call more of the same, with a superb cast of characters who express their emotions with some very decent motion capture work, which disguises some slightly iffy lip syncing. But that really is some subatomic nitpicking right there, because by far and away the stars of the show are quite literally the stars of the show, the voice cast, the shadowy all-powerful, elusive man, kind of like the smoking man from the X-Files, he's played by Martin Sheen. Uh, Mr. Seth Green, he returns as Joker, and Carrie Ann Moss plays Arya. I'm the boss, CEO, queen if you're feeling dramatic. The spaceship's computer, weirdly, is voiced by Alan Carr, chatty man. Well, it's quite a grotty house, but I don't think Simon Cowell, because I've seen him on Crips, and I don't think he has a grotty house. Ha! <laughs> Not really. It's the woman from Battlestar. Yes. So, with less slowdown and some of the greatest sound design I've ever heard in a game, it's an absolute winner. The adjective epic is used way too much when describing multi-million dollar video games, but this time round it fits Mass Effect 2 like a glove. Right. We will stop at nothing. We will fight for the lost. Now on XVG, I thought it'd be remiss of me if every episode I didn't look back at a few games that have been all but forgotten by the march of time. This week, it's a bit of a buried gem. Laura Bore 2, The Secret of Amon Ra, released in 1992, was one of Sierra's more sophisticated graphic adventures, a genre which was very popular during the 90s. Whereas big rivals LucasArts were pumping out a game every year, maybe every two years, titles like Monkey Island, Indiana Jones, stuff like that. On the other hand, Sierra had three or four series on the go at any one time. Police Quest, Space Quest, King's Quest, Quest for Flippin' Glory... <coughs> Laura Bore 2 was the follow-up to The Colonel's Bequest, one of the most punishing video games ever made. There were literally over a hundred different ways to die. Uh, in the second game, gone was the sluggish text-based system, and in came the point and click. All in 256 colours. Imagine that! The story picks up with Laura, now a reporter for a New York newspaper, investigating the case of a missing ancient Egyptian dagger. As with a lot of Sierra games, this one loved a dead end, and if you didn't manage to pick up an object at a particular time and in a particular way, the story moved on and you were pretty much screwed. Games were so much more unforgiving back in the day, so if you were ever a fan of the genre, this is an interesting footnote in graphic adventure history, and it's available online for free if you're willing to have a bit of a mooch about. So, to finish us off in the worst possible way, how's about some bad video game box art? They say you should never judge a book by its cover, but when it looks as bad as this, I think we can all make an exception. I mean, look at it. In at number two, from an irritating stick to a shattering hand. I think they're trying to say that this fella's hands shatter things, but to be honest, he kind of looks in pain, so maybe he's got incredibly brittle bones or something. And speaking of hands, looks like Alex Kidd needs some sort of hand biopsy. It's another winner from the Sega Master System artists. And that is about it. If you'd like to get in touch, this is the email address that matters. I've been Pete Donaldson. See ya! Destiny.